Hey everyone, welcome to my new video series, Airbrush 101, where I will be showing how to airbrush miniatures effectively and safely. And this is part one. And similar to my old series, I will start off with tools of the trade. What exactly do you need to airbrush miniatures? So let's start off with a million dollar question. Why use an airbrush? That's a good question. And there's actually many reasons why you can use an airbrush. First of all, it creates really clean results with very little time, and it helps save a lot of time when painting large models like this Land Raider. You get clean results with no brush strokes, and it's just a great time saver. The second reason is airbrushes produce unbelievably clean gradients, like this force weapon on this Grey Knight. Basically it creates a very clean gradient, and it's unmatched. And third, it's fun. It's fun to use airbrushes and it really makes you want to paint. Getting a new airbrush will make you want to paint miniatures like no one's business. But obviously there are drawbacks. So are there downsides to, to getting into airbrushing? Yes, there are. And to be completely transparent, uh, the first one is that you need to learn. It's a new tool. And there's a learning curve associated with each time you want to learn a new tool. And you just have to learn it and it takes a little bit of practice and some knowledge of how to use an airbrush. And the second thing is the financial cost. Now this is the big one that deters a lot of people from wanting to get into airbrushing, is the financial cost associated with getting into airbrushing because there's a lot of tools you also require, besides the airbrush itself, to airbrush miniatures. And I will be going over those tools today. But that being said, a lot of people do wonder and ask me frequently, do I recommend them getting an airbrush? And if they have the time and they have the money and they're painting larger than models, I actually very much recommend an airbrush. It's a great tool and it is an awesome tool to keep in your, in your tool belt if you're painting miniatures. So that brings us to this part, tools of the trades. So let's go over all the tools you require to airbrush miniatures. So first of all, you will need an airbrush. This is the standard airbrush that I use. It is a Badger Patriot 105, and I highly recommend this airbrush, but I will be covering all these parts in future videos in much more depth. So this is a standard gravity feed dual action airbrush that is a generalist airbrush. It's good for a lot of things, and you require obviously an airbrush when airbrushing miniatures. And as I said, I recommend the Air Patriot 105 if you're brand new. Second, of course, you need a hose. You need to connect your airbrush to the air source. And this is a standard hose with two very standard sized openings. That being said, uh, both the Badger Patriot 105 and my air compressor don't have standard size um, connections. So you will also need adapters. Depending on which airbrush you choose, you might need an adapter to connect your hose to your airbrush or a, an adapter to connect your hose to the compressor. Now typically the compressors come with the adapters, but it's always good to know what airbrush you're picking up and airbrushes could be that adapter or this this is a quick release adapter that you can use to, for quick release hoses onto airbrushes, specifically for the Badger series. But of course you can get them elsewhere. Next you need a compressor or an air supply. Now some people use these simple elephant hobby store compressors and they work great. They're a great cheap choice. You don't get as many options, you don't get as much control, but they're a great starting point. Up to this compressor, this is a TC910 from Badger and it's an amazing airbrush. It has two tanks, uh, some great control over your, your PSI and I highly recommend it if you, uh, if you have a little bit more money to spend. And also you can use like air tanks, some people use air tanks. Next, of course, you need paints. You need paints to paint miniatures. So you have two choices. Either you can use paints specifically designed for airbrushes. I recommend the two types are Vallejo Model Air on the left and Minotaur from Badger on the right. Both of them are fantastic paints designed specifically for airbrushing. However, if you want to use GW paints or P3 paints, you need to buy some thinner. Some airbrush thinner, it's a great medium. I don't recommend water because water tends to dilute the pigments pretty badly, but thinner is a great medium to put into your airbrush and it creates that nice consistency that you are required to airbrush with these paints. You're also re required to get some airbrush cleaner. You need to clean your airbrush to keep it in great shape and keep it operating functionally. Uh, some people recommend glass cleaners, which you can use as well. I prefer using things specifically designed for cleaners, so I use this Badger Minotaur cleaner or one by Vallejo. You also need a bottle of water. I highly recommend a bottle of water. Water is cheap. This is one of the cheaper things you need to buy, but uh, just a bottle of water. Fill an old bottle with it. It really will help in cleaning out your airbrush. You'll need tape. You need tape to mask off parts of the miniature and to create nice, clean, even lines. I highly recommend painter's tape, either the blue or the green, depending on what you have access to and what you want for the adhesiveness. But I highly recommend it. I use both for different things. 
You can use an airbrush pot. Now an airbrush pot you basically spray the excess paint water into and it collects it and prevents the fumes from getting into your face. And that's great. This is a kind of a, an optional choice. You can create your own, which I will be showing in a future video. Next, gloves. I do recommend them. You don't see me using them a lot in my tutorials, but I really do highly recommend gloves. It protects your hands, and that way you're not spraying all the chemicals onto your hands. It also prevents you from fingerprinting up the miniatures, especially if you're painting tanks. Uh, gloves are your best friend for this. They'll help you out a lot. And finally, I cannot recommend this enough, a air mask. If you are airbrushing, protect your lungs, spray in, an in a really open environment, and use a mask to protect your lungs. That way you don't end up damaging them in the long term. Up next, paper towels. I use heavy duty shop towels and you'll definitely require these both cleaning your airbrush and protecting the surface of your table when you're airbrushing. I like to lay these down first and then airbrush on top of them. That way they clean up easily. I can just throw them out and then there is no significant mess. And that's it. And finally, a spray booth. I don't have one, uh, but some people use them to deodorize and that's about it. So those are the tools of the trade and I will be going over each of these things in more depth in future videos or in certain parts. And that is just the beginning of this series called Airbrush 101. So I really hope you enjoyed it. And as I said, I'm going to be going over depth in many, this is going to be a many part tutorial. So thank you so much for watching this episode of Airbrush 101. Stay tuned for part two, which is just around the corner. While we're going over airbrushes in depth, talking about what you need to to buy them, what you need to look at when buying them, different types of airbrushes, and what I recommend, recommend for miniature painting. So, until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.